I am a professor of art education and socially engaged art at the University of Malta. I work in a faculty of education and um, I coordinate a master's degree in the teaching and learning of art. So my students are actually being trained to become student uh, teachers of art in uh, local schools. But I also coordinate another master's degree, which is in social practice arts and critical education. And this degree combines uh, aspects of education, especially critical pedagogy, with uh, the visual arts and the theater. And basically in this degree, what we try to do is implement and research projects in so socially engaged contexts, essentially. That's what I do. Do I feel I belong to the Global South? Mm -hmm. It's uh, not an easy, not an easy question, but definitely, I mean, in relation to the rest of Europe, Malta is obviously very much in the South. Uh, I mean, globally, if you look at the equator, Malta is uh, north of the equator, so we are not in the global south. Uh, having said that, I think traditionally Malta has always had kind of a relationship with other countries, which from our perspective are up north. So I guess we do feel this kind of uh, link or connection to the south. Well, uh, Malta has always been colonized throughout its history. So we have had a history of connections. And I think these connections can also be seen from a positive light in the sense that we, you know, when you have connections with other countries, you also learn a lot. And we have connections with our neighbors, especially Italy, because we are so close uh, to the Italian uh, mainland uh, and to Sicily in, in particular. But we are also close to Northern Africa. Uh, so even ling linguistically, our language is actually a Semitic language. So it's actually close to, to Arabic. And I think, you know, even in art education locally, we have always had this tendency to look at other sources and then combine them in our own way. So uh, I guess this is what even our art educators, you know, try to do. They basically take ideas from different sources and we try to combine them in a, in a kind of uh, a creative way, looking uh, towards the future. So trying to create things which are innovative, but at the same time, not forgetting the past. I've been recently involved in a research project. It was an EU funded project. Uh, the project was called CARE, uh, and it was led by uh, Frederick University uh, in Nicosia in Cyprus. And in this project called CARE, what we tried to do was basically to combine two different disciplines. One was art education and the other one was education for sustainable development. Essentially, what we try to do is to infuse principles of education for sustainable development into the teaching of uh, art. So we did a lot of things in this three-year project. There were many different partners involved. We also involved uh, teachers. Uh, we took, for example, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, which are related to Agenda 2030. And we tried to find ways of linking these different uh, Sustainable Development Goals to the visual arts and also you know, other strategies from drama education like role play and so on. Um, we also developed a number of big ideas, uh, and these big ideas were kind of putting a lot of complex information into these kind of simple statements, which we then presented to teachers uh, to help them kind of develop essential questions about, you know, relevant issues, uh, issues like public space, conservation and change, diversity, compassion. All of these ideas are really important if you want to take sustainability seriously. But if you think about them, all of those ideas are really important even in art education. Think about, you know, the relationship between diversity, you know, and cultural diversity of uh, art education. In this project, we also chose a number of artists and artworks, contemporary artists from, from the different countries involved. And we chose works of art which they produced, which were kind of relevant to different aspects of sustainability. And we tried to choose a range of works which uh, came from, I don't know, different, different genre, like uh, temporary installations to uh, activism, to cartoons and so on. We also produced a number of handbooks and the handbooks were aimed at teacher trainers like myself. So people from other universities who might be interested in developing specific study units in their courses, uh, which could help uh, to link uh, sustainable development with, with the arts.
um, but also handbooks for teachers. So you know, handbooks which could help teachers develop new lessons, new ideas in class, so more hands-on hands -on ideas. For example, locally here in Malta, what we did is we linked uh, sustainable development to local issues like uh, uh, public space, which I think is a very important and contested uh, aspect here because Malta is obviously a very small country. So we kind of step on each other's toes, so to speak, all the time. So public space is a big issue, big kind of political issue. And so we dealt with it. We also engaged uh, other issues like hunting because it has a kind of tradition here and it's also a controversial issue. So we went into these different aspects and we linked them to art education, of course. So I think that is, I would say, one of the uh, examples of good practice, which I've been involved in directly recently because it kind of linked also university to, to schools, which I think is really important. Thank you.